Hi friends. Today I am continuing my play with this uh, beautiful dagger brush. This is the Princeton Neptune and it's the quarter inch. And I'm going to end up painting on this uh, Grumbacher again. I'm actually almost out. Um, it's the 140 cold press and just this student grade that I'll be showing you a few things uh, with. I wanted to just share with you how much of a difference it makes when you're playing with different values. These flowers are basically these two monochromatic, meaning this is all purple and this is all yellow, yet I'm able to create this fun. This actually has a little orange in it, I believe. But this flower here is monochromatic, meaning it's one color, this purple, yet it has such beautiful difference and variety of colors and interest because I just played with the values of the color. So for those of you that have told me you only have a few colors, which is great. You you actually only need your primary colors in reality, the um, red, yellow, and blue. And you can make all these other colors from those three primary colors, your secondary colors, your tertiary colors, just from red, yellow, and blue. So, what we're going to do today, I'm going to do today, is use this dagger brush and play with the values. I think it's really important to learn and warm up and practice with creating the different values. So right there, I went in with a lot of color. Let me show you that. So I've got a lot of color on my brush. Let me get rid of some of that water and darken that value up for you even a little bit more. These dagger brushes, one thing about them is they really pick up a lot of water. So there is your full value of violet purple. Now what I'm going to do is rinse my brush and start playing with lightening that value. So I'll just go in and I'm going to add that wet brush and start pulling it out. And as you see here, you get that transition in value. So we've got more pigment here. And as I added the water and pulled it out, it gets lighter and lighter in value. And what also happens with that, why I like playing with values is like in this painting here, I've got a very dark value, meaning more pigment, less water, and then a lot of water, less pigment. And what that does is it pops out the dark value and makes it feel like the lighter value is in the background. So it creates a lot of interest and depth in your paintings. So playing with your values and getting to be able to use those with a little bit of skill is really worth it. As you're going to see, I'm going to paint this picture using one color, but you'll see how interesting it is because I play with the values. So going into my olive and my sap green here, starting with a pretty dark value which again is mostly pigment. And then I'll go in, rinse my brush, and now go into that and pull that paint out. And as you see, it gets lighter and lighter. I'm going to do it again, just add more water. 
and I'm actually going to tap this off because this brush holds so much and get it even lighter. So it just continues to get lighter and lighter. Rinsed my brush off again until we get there. Okay. And that's all we're going to be, I'm going to be using in this next little painting. I will also use um, the push and pull technique that I use almost in everything. And um, we'll just play with these values. Let's go ahead and I think I will go ahead and use this paper that I already have here. It tends to puddle and pull a little bit, but that's, that's okay. We're just playing here. Let's dip our paint, our brush, I mean, into our paint. Now I'm going to use somewhat of a light value to start with because we always want to work light to dark. And I'll link this palette I have in the description below because you all ask me about this every time. And this link I use is not an affiliate link. I'm just sharing with you this link. So I've got quite a bit of water in there. What I'm going to do is I am pointing, let's try it both ways, using the point of my dagger brush up. And then the next one I will use this way and we'll see the difference. So I'm drawing these um, somewhat of a carnation type look. Let's start with our first one here. And I'm just moving my brush up and down and kind of fanning it out to the sides. Okay, let's do another one here. Kind of making these jagged points. And let's do it this way with the point in. We're going towards the center of our flower, remember, always pointing and pointing the tip of our brush in the direction we want. Let's pick up just a tiny bit more paint. And I think I almost like that way better. Okay. There we go. We can tap in here while it's still wet. And I'm going to use more of the tip of my brush and create these strokes behind. So let's start right here. I'm not using the full brush. This is one thing, boy, I've really had to get used to is how much water this brush and pigment it picks up. I'm not quite used to that. So I'm creating some of these little petals in the background. Just using the tip of this brush. This is really perfect for carnations, I think. It really gives me a feel. Let's go in up a little bit more of our paint, that light value, because we're going to work from light to dark. Like that. And just adding these onto each other. And I think that's good. We could maybe add one right here. Something like that. There we go all pointing back to that center. Now I'm going to go in, rinse my brush. Normally, by the way, I have two things of water, which is really important. I forgot my second one to fill it up, so I'm working with one today. Don't do, don't do that. <laughs> Let's go in with a light value of that green, so about mid-range here. And what I always notice about carnations is they have kind of this round bulb at the bottom. And then use the beautiful tip on this brush and come down. Look at how 
thin a line I can get. There we go, okay. We're gonna let that dry a little. Let's do another carnation over here. So I wash and rinse my brush and pick up that purple again. We're going to stick with the same value. So very light, more water than paint. And let's do another one coming out here sideways. So we start with the middle petal, and I think I'm going to go with my point in and the angle down closest to the paper. We'll make this one a little bit smaller, like that. I think this does such a great job creating these uh, carnations. I'm just kind of doing a raggedy edge like that. You can really point in either direction with the point towards the middle or outside, whichever kind of feels more familiar to you. You know, that's why it's so important to play with your brushes and really see what feels comfortable for you. Now going in the background, I'm using more the tip. I'm not using the entire angle edge and just going in and creating some of these little back rufflies. Just like this. Just using that tip. Like that. And then wash and rinse my brush. Now remember, normally you'd have a wash container and a rinse container, really important. And go in with my green. I use olive and sap green. And create that little pod. If you have too much water, just tap it off and bringing it down. Okay, now is the fun part. Let's go in and just play with the values. So I wash and rinse my brush, tap it off a bit, and I'm going to pick up a darker value, meaning more paint than water. And you may have to just do a little swatch of it to see about where you're at. That's about, oops, sorry about that. That's about where I want to be because that's darker than what I've got here. So let's go in and I think I will start here and just start glazing, which is just putting another layer over like so that's darker not pretty and maybe going in on this one and putting in a little bit darker value so we're just glazing over the original lighter value that we laid there all in the same color like that. So see how interesting that is? Now let's just go in and maybe we're going to use that push-pull technique that you know I love. And when you use that technique, make sure to scrape off some of that water, but use a darker value. And go in and just touch in here. Once I do that, I will wash, rinse my brush. And now the important thing, especially with the dagger, because it holds so much water, make sure your brush is just damp. And we're going to go in and push and pull that. Like so. As you know, I love this technique so much. 
and look how pretty that is. Now we could even go in here and darken this value down here. Even darker, like that. Yeah, that's pretty. And now wash and rinse my brush tap it off and go in and feather that again. Look how pretty. It's so pretty. And you could feather these edges. Now remembering that brush has a lot of water. And just tap in again. So we're darkening gradually the values and creating this interest. You could draw some of those down if you wanted, if you like that detail. And I think what I'll even do here is really dry off my brush and maybe go in and pick up some paint. And pull out some paint. So you're getting all these different values, all the same color. Now I feel like I want to work with this edge over here, so I'll pick up that purple paint, darker value. And go into this ruffle here and just line it like that. Wash and rinse my brush, dab it off, and feather out that edge, like so. See that beautiful interest here? Now we could do this little flower here. It's already got a few different values in here, which is really great. Let's darken this value in the back. Picking up my paint and going in with the tip and just making that a little bit darker like that. Isn't that pretty? And it's just creates so much interest for your flowers to create these dark and light spaces. I think it really makes a big difference. Now you can go in and feather those out by rinsing, washing your brush, tapping them off, and just feathering that edge. Just softening all these light edges because for me that's really the characteristic and the beautiful qualities of watercolors. You can add in a tiny bit down here if we wanted, just at the very, very bottom. Wash our brush. And this is where this dagger really is fun. It has that beautiful little tip. And pull it out a bit. Now let's go in and play with the values of this green for some of those leaves. Picking up my green paint. I'm using my sap and my olive green. And I feel like I want to water that down a bit. So let's go here. Just add a little bit more water on my brush and start with the lighter value. Okay. And come out. I know um, 
these carnation uh, leaves are real raggedy, but I'm going to make them my style, which is nice and smooth. So point, turn your brush on its side, and come up. So we've got that beautiful light value. Let's do it again with that light value. Point, lay your brush on its side, and then come up. Now, if you don't like this, this little blob, just tap off your brush and you can pick that up. So if you don't like that, just pick it up with a somewhat dry brush. Now we'll go in and add a couple leaves with a much darker value, meaning less water. So I've got quite a bit of pigment there and less water. Let's go in and make a leaf here. Point, press, and up. So see how that beautiful leaf just popped out? Let's pick up a little bit more of that, more pigment. Darker value, so we're closer to this value. So that's why it's important to know how much water you need to add in so you know how to get to your lighter values and your darker values. And let's create another little petal here. I'm starting on the point with light pressure and bringing it out. And look at that. So boy, that really shows you what a difference playing with values can make. These two leaves definitely look like they're in front. These look like they're in the back. And also, even though we just used one color here, we played with the values. So it added this interest. The darker values moved forward. It gave us that depth and the lighter values came into the back. We varied our sizes for some interest and played with the values in the leaves. So you can really see this interesting piece that was only created with two colors and just playing with values and sizes, okay? So I wanted to also mention something else as far as composition, although I wasn't completely working with composition here. There is, I kind of do this naturally, there is this wonderful S shape to this. That's why it works. I usually, a, a rule of thirds is typical for compositions. It's just, um, feels more natural to our eye to have rules of thirds, meaning your objects are in rules of thirds. This one is in two, but it is in this S composition. So bringing your eye in here, you follow over here, and then down through the bottom of the S. And because of that, being able to move your eye around different sizes, this became our focal point, and then this almost became like threes right here. Three smaller objects, one large object. So there was no competing for um, focal point or interest, and the S shape kept your eye moving, as well as the different values created a lot of interest. So give this all a try. This uh, again was playing, continuing our playing with this Dagger Princeton brush. This one a quarter inch. And more than anything, playing with these values of one color. If you can only use three colors, and I actually took a college course that she only let us have three, the three primary colors, 
and I really had to learn to play with the values and sizes to create interest in my paintings and also to learn how to make purples and all these different colors because of course um, green is yellow and blue and purple yellow or uh, blue and yet and red so it's fun to play with just a couple simple colors and have to use the values to make it interesting so i hope you'll give this a try and again with that dagger brush 140 pound cold pressed paper although this was student grade and uh, have fun with this let me know if you have any questions and thanks for joining me here on my channel.